Hello and welcome back again to Dragon Age Origins. We are here in Wade's Emporium and you know what that means. Yes, it's another episode full of party banter and this time I actually uh, brought my dog along because I didn't include him in any of the previous episodes. Also this is going to be the last uh, episode of party banter because I assume that I probably won't have the chance to do another one. So that means um, whatever banter I miss, uh, I'm afraid I can't help that because there seems to be just uh, too much of it. But yeah, let's go and see what they have to say. Hey, you stupid mutt. What are you looking at me for? Well, you better get moving, you great sodding pile of potential poo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently the dog has I'll dialogue for everyone as well, so I am curious to see those. If you just stood still for a minute. <laughs> you like Ogren, don't you? Ogren's your friend. That's right, we understand each other. Now, <laughs> stand still, you stupid mutt. <laughs> oh, come on! You're so melodramatic. I haven't even put the saddle on yet. <laughs> Ogren is trying to ride it. To ride him. Uh. Doc peers up at Sten tail wagging. Don't look at me like that. Doc continues peering a little more determined. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> there is no time. We have work to do. Oh, fine. Bring me the stick. But this is the last time, I swear it. <laughs> yeah, as I said before, I think Stan likes a dog better than anyone in my team. Don't give me that look, dog. You're about one lifted leg away from becoming a new pair of <laughs> boots. Oh, come on. Don't be so mean to my dog. Watch where you're going, you sodding great horse of a dog. One day, <laughs> someone's gonna kick you, beast. Uh, not saying <laughs> who, but someone. <laughs> Ogre really doesn't like my dog, does he? Okay, I've got a better idea now. I know you don't like me on your back, but <laughs> how about a cherry of some kind, huh? Spiked wheels, the crest of my house emblazoned in the front. It would look mighty impressive. I can just see it. And you, my great sodding mutt steed, shall charge headlong into the fray while I stand in my chariot, chopping to the left and to the right. <laughs> we would fell thousands. <laughs> ah, oh, come on. You have no vision. One day you'll see. I'll have my team of Grand Mabari charioteers. <laughs> You sodding dog. You'll be sorry you didn't get in on the action when you could have. <laughs> I think that's actually a brilliant idea. I love that idea. What do you want now? I don't understand you. <laughs> Are you trying to say something about a child in a well? <laughs> Fenris gives Stan a quizzical look. <laughs> Uh, I think no? Stan. Um, never mind then. Uh, you overestimate uh, Fenris' ability to talk. <laughs> All right, I have been exiting and entering a couple of times now, and apparently these three aren't talking anymore. So I may have exhausted their dialogue, which means I can change to a new team. All right, I have exchanged Ogren for Shale, so let's see what they have to say. What do you estimate are the chances of success, Konari? For the Grey Warden, little to none. <laughs> so why does it follow? I do not risk death, but it does. My mission is no different from the Grey Wardens. I must see this through to the end. It would rather perish than give up its quest. Indeed. There is honor to be salvaged <laughs> in such a quest, no matter its chances. Honor is a curious thing. It is far better to be practical. What use is practicality when it leads to cowardice and emptiness? It is better to live well than to live. 
An uh, interesting <laughs> theory. There is worth in your life, Shale. There is value, but only if it is used. I think Shale is not impressed by your philosophy, Stan. <laughs> Now's better than later. I wish to say that it has been pleasant fighting at the Kunari's side. I feel the same. You are a remarkable <laughs> construct, Kadan. A warrior to be feared. No more than the Kunari, surely. The way it strikes down its foes, marvelous. <laughs> I smile each time you roar a battle cry, knowing our foes tremble. I could watch you fight all day long. The skill you display, the form, how the light <laughs> plays on its muscles. I mean, yes, well done with the fighting. You as well. <laughs> right. But these two get along better than I expected. Why don't you get a room, hmm? I have heard an interesting tale of the Kunari. Speak, Kadan. I am told that the Kunari put mages on leashes. <laughs> leashes. <laughs> what a delightful concept. It is not something that one should take pleasure in. It is done because it is necessary. Why not put them out of their misery? Crush their skulls and be done with it. <laughs> Fast, efficient, fun. You have been offended by such men, so your bloodlust can be forgiven. But these ones you speak of are to be pitied. Even so, they must serve, just as any other must serve. All must find their place within the Kuhn. Does sound like a delightful place where it comes from. Mages on <laughs> leashes. What will they think of next? I cannot say that they would not wish to put a leash on you as well, Kadan. Hmm. That does sound less fun. Yes. Yeah, it's... It's never fun if it's done to you, right? <laughs> Interesting. I am watching you, dog. Do you know how many of your kind urinated on me in that village? <laughs> and all I could do is stand there and watch, helpless. If I see one of those legs of yours lift so much as an inch in my direction, pow! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we have this understanding. At least your kind can be reasoned with. Unlike those damned feathered fiends. Yeah, Shale is highly traumatized by that. There is an intelligence behind those canine eyes of yours, dog. It occurs to me that the dog was forged in a way not unlike I was. <laughs> Someone sought to create a useful tool, and they employed magic to create the dog. Um. The only difference is that I apparently volunteered to become what I am. The dog has heard the tale, no? <laughs> Good. I wonder, however, if the dog would have decided differently had it had a choice. Would it have remained a stupid and ineffective hound, but a happy one? <laughs> I, too, struggle with this question. I wish I could remember the dwarf that I once was. I suppose the dog and I are not so different after all. Just keep <laughs> your urine to yourself. I'm not sure if my dog was crafted by magic, but I suppose uh, the Mababi were bred to have certain traits and stuff, so it's perhaps similar. Alright, can't get anything else out of them, so let's change up the party again. Alright, now I have Morrigan in my party. Would the Swamp Witch consider explaining the nature of magic to me? I am most <laughs> curious. Surely there is another who would not be so bothered by your tiresome questions. <laughs> Perhaps Alistair? I fear the second warden has not the knowledge to answer my question. <laughs> you might ask him anyhow. Certainly whatever he happened to come up with would serve as amusement. I do not understand. I seek enlightenment and not amusement. You're apt to get much further seeking amusement, I assure you. <laughs> the Swamp Witch is a most confusing creature. I do not understand it. <laughs> You're not the first one to say so. The first golem, perhaps. I will ask the Swamp Witch later, when it is less inclined to make bizarre responses <laughs> to my queries. You will be waiting some time then, I fear. Yeah, good luck with that, Shale. Morgan can be confusing. The Swamp Witch has been looking at me oddly. Stop it, or I will crush its tiny bird-like head. <laughs> I am simply finding it difficult to believe that there is a woman inside of there. A woman who is also a warrior. 
and a dwarf. Yes, that would explain a great deal. <laughs> what exactly does that explain? Huh? I would still like to know how the Swamp Witch learns its forms. <laughs> Eager, are you not? Does the Golem wish to become human after all? A human is a soft and weak form. I desire no such thing. Then why the interest in shape-changing? Unless you secretly wish to become something other than what you are. Is that why the Swamp Witch learned? To escape her form? In a way. It was lonely to grow up in the wilds. To join with the forest, to become one with its denizens. There was a freedom in that. I think it would be an excellent talent for disguises. Hmm. Or perhaps to walk through doors without hitting one's head. Hmm? Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, tis not a good enough reason. Yeah, good luck with that shell. She didn't want to teach me the shape changer specification either. I actually bought the book from the elves uh, during my round trip, so I have it now if I ever wanted to use it. What is a good enough reason? For which? It said that my reason for learning more of shape changing was not good enough. What reason would be? <laughs> I do not know. Tell me what it is and I shall decide. It could simply decide any reason was insufficient then. You find that maddening, do you? It has a bird-like nature to its sadism. I'll give <laughs> it that. Good. Let us leave it that way. Yeah. <laughs> no hope there. Get you, a ladder? You, you ate my entire bag of herbs, you foolish dog. Do not <laughs> think I am unaware of where it went. <laughs> it's your own fault for being so entirely gluttonous. Several of those herbs were poisonous. You should be pleased they did not kill you. Oh God. <laughs> Do not be ridiculous. I am certainly not going to give you more, even if I did have more to give. Oh, you have some nerve, creature. And your breath leaves much to be desired. Off you go. <laughs> we shall see. see. I promise nothing. <laughs> ah, he's getting to you, Morrigan, right? Come on, nobody can resist a dog dog size. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off? Another? I just gave you one, fool <laughs> dog. Perhaps you should go and hunt something then. For a warrior beast, you are remarkably over-dependent. <laughs> oh, very well. But tell no one. <laughs> yeah, he totally got to you. Alright, that's all I got out of them. Uh, so let's change the party again. Alright, alright. Alright, and I brought in Alistair now. Let's see. Just how smart are Mabari supposed to be, anyway? Do you think they understand everything we say? <laughs> oh, is that so? You could just be listening to the tone of my voice. You could be an utter moron <laughs> for all we know. <laughs> hey, hey, now. <laughs> There's nothing saying that a moron can't be cute and adorable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's the cute and adorable puppy? <laughs> you know, it's his bliss, isn't it? That's what the Chantry kept telling me anyhow. Oh, Alistair. <laughs> Do you really know what's going on here? The blight, the civil war? I really wonder how much of it you understand. <laughs> Wax tail happily. We're all special. Big parts to play. Even you, especially you in some ways. Mm -hmm. You are the Mabari. You guard one of the most important people. <laughs> what? <laughs> you you want to play but I'm talking why doesn't anyone <laughs> want to hear me talk oh I like to hear you talk Alistair but yeah the Barbari will have a role to play um, I will get to that uh, in the can next I episode ladder, so you can get off. I do wonder is it permissible for two grey wardens to oh what is the word mm -hmm. I search for caboodle <laughs> Fraternize. What? What's wrong with fraternizing? It seems most undisciplined for an organization that claims it will do whatever is necessary to end the Darkspawn threat. One thing has nothing to do with the other. Oh no? 
And what if the Grey Warden was forced to choose between the Warden he loved and ending the Blight? What should his choice be? That is a, a ridiculous question. <laughs> and I have my answer. Most kind of you. Yeah. Hmm. Now's better than later. Have a care where your eyes linger, Alistair. Yes, well, don't <laughs> worry. It's not what you think. <laughs> I see. I was looking at your nose. <laughs> and what? what is it about my nose that captivates you so? I was just thinking that it looks exactly like your mother's. I hate you so <laughs> much. Hmm? <laughs> what? Never mind. Oh. You actually found a way to upset her. That's interesting. You do not truly think I look as my mother does, do you? Have you really been thinking about that all this time? <laughs> I am simply curious. And not insecure in the slightest, I'm sure. I think I look nothing like her. I don't know. Give it a few hundred years and it'll be a spot-on match. <laughs> I said that I look nothing like her. All right, got it. <laughs> totally different. I see that now. <laughs> I mean... Wasn't she adopted anyway and Flemeth wasn't actually her real mother? I I don't I don't understand. Alright, that seems to be all I can get out of them, so let's change the party. Alright, now it's Wind's turn. You are a handsome canine specimen, aren't you? <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, but look at that tiny stubby tail. Would you like a nicer tail? I could give you a long, <laughs> swishy tail if you like. Just a wave of a wand and poof, tail. You'll adore it, I promise. Or maybe you would like to be a different color. We could spice up that drab brown with some red <laughs> or blue, perhaps even violet. War dogs need to be pretty too, don't <laughs> they? God. Yes, you want to be pretty, pretty dog. That's right. You just love attention, don't you? And you want antlers. A big swishy tail and <laughs> ant- Hey! He, he made off with my staff. Perhaps I underestimated <laughs> his intelligence. <laughs> so there are actually spell spells for tail enlargement. I believe this might open up a whole new uh, income opportunity for mages, if you get my meaning. They say the Mabari is clever enough to speak and wise enough to know <laughs> not to. Tell me, my friend, does this saying apply to you? Are you capable of speech and simply choose not to speak? <laughs> he wags his tail. <laughs> Sometimes I think the world would be a much friendlier place if we could learn some things from animals. Nothing in the animal kingdom can match the worst qualities of humanity. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I guess that's everything I can get out of these three. It's actually get, getting progressively more difficult to trigger dialogue. Uh, sometimes I have to enter like three or four times to get something. But uh, I take that as a good sign that I'm slowly, you know, exhausting all the different dialogue options. All right, I brought in Zevran now. Let's go. You have not asked me about my conscience for some time, my darling Wynn. <laughs> that is correct. And I am not your darling. Ah, so once again I am rejected. Just as I am by the cruel, cruel fates. They are harsh mistresses to the elves. Zevran, I am old enough to be your grandmother. You say that like it's a bad thing. And what would you do with me if you had me, hmm? This is a game you play, nothing more. Ah, you are a cynical woman, Win. Cynical and powerful. <laughs> it drives me mad with desire. <laughs> yeah, Zara didn't have much luck with the ladies uh, on this on this uh, adventure. I'm going to walk away now. <laughs> she actually had something to say after a while. Can I get you a ladder so you can get? We have dogs in Antiva. They run in the streets and eat garbage. <laughs> it's true. They're treated as vermin, mostly. Not like here in Ferelden. You're rather lucky to live here, you know. <laughs> Indeed. 
Here they make statues of dogs. They carve you into their thrones and put armor on you. Amazing, really. <laughs> but you still smell like a dog. In fact, you smell like several dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, Fenris ignorance doesn't care. is bliss, I suppose. Ferris doesn't care. He's a dog. I couldn't help hearing about your predicament. Forgive me if I'm prying. Yes, you are. But what does it feel like being possessed by a spirit? Why does this interest you so? I simply wish to get to know those that I travel with. Is that wrong with me? Mm -hmm. No, of course it isn't. Well, let me see. It is hard to describe. It is comforting. I... I feel safe. Loved. Comforted. Loved. Yes. What? It is like... Being held close, cradled, the bond is so complete that I am unable to extricate myself, nor do I wish to. Wait, why do you have that look on your face? Mm. I, I, I am simply imagining it. Continue, please. <laughs> and there is a constant warmth that spreads outwards from the very center of my being, infusing my God. body with... Oh. <laughs> Andraste's grace, what are you thinking about now? No, I don't want to know. I feel dirty. Do not speak to me. Yeah, leave it to Zeran to twist it into something dirty. You dirty, dirty man. <laughs> I noticed some dog drool in my pack this morning. <laughs> not that I like to make accusations, and I even appreciate the artistry behind a good burgle when I see it, to tell the truth. But leaving all that drool as evidence? Sloppy. <laughs> I'll take that as an apology. I'm so yeah. glad you're pleased. It really is quite something to find such enthusiasm in one's companions. I agree. Go team. Hurrah. <laughs> yeah, you can pretty much uh, interpret everything into his barks. So let us pretend that I do, indeed, believe that murder is wrong. We are not having this conversation. Were I to believe such a thing, what would I do with it? Feeling guilt about things one can no longer change seems so very time-consuming with little hope for actual gain. But you could change what you do in the future. Ah, <sighs> what would that require exactly? It <laughs> seems to me that feeling guilty would take up a great deal of my time as it is. Perhaps you could save a life instead. One for every life you have taken. That is a great many lives to save and feel guilty as well. Perhaps I could do one or the other. It mm. is not a game, Zephyrin. You either know right from wrong, or you do not. I... I am so confused. <laughs> I think I may cry. May I lay my head in your bosom? No. No, you may not. You are so very cruel. How is it that you do not feel guilty? I feel guilty for ever having spoken to you. Give it up, Zervin, give it up. It's it's not going to work that way. <laughs> Alright, I couldn't get anything out of them anymore, so I brought in Liliana now. How long were you in that cloister, my dear woman? Just over two years. Why do you ask? And And all the brothers and sisters there, they had taken vows? <laughs> Most of them, yes. For two years you had no contact with anyone but men and women who who are promised to some uncaring god? What are you getting at? Mm-hmm. Didn't you... didn't you desire companionship during those two years? Two years! The very thought makes me weak. My time in the cloister was a time of contemplation. I occupied myself with thoughts of the Mako and other worthy pursuits. But like I said, most of the brothers and sisters had taken vows. Not all of them. Some were just affirmed, like me. Aha! That is not so bad then. <laughs> Nothing happened, Zivran. It would not be right to engage in that behavior in a house devoted to the Maker. Why? The Maker made us who we are. He made our urges. He gave us these parts. You think <laughs> he made them for looks? Well, who knows? <laughs> Uh. All right, all right. You're such a handsome dog. I think that every time I look at you. 
<laughs> Lady Cecily, I lived with her after my mother died, had a dog. A small one, bred to fit under the arm and in the lap. What did you name it? Oh, yes, Bonbon. <laughs> oh, Bonbon was a terror. He would hide, you know, when he saw you coming. And then he would attack your ankles. Rather sharp teeth in the ankles. Very painful. He attacked me once, latched onto my leg. I thought it was a diseased rat and kicked. Bonbon <laughs> flew across the room and over the baluster. He survived. But he never came near me after that. <laughs> that was an interesting story, Liliana. I have been setting down in ink the tales of our exploits, and I have been thinking about ways to describe you. You are unlike any animal I have ever met. Almost human in your intelligence and understanding. So, let me see. You are loyal, yes? That one is obvious. <laughs> very, very clever. This is also obvious. You are terrifying when you have to be, but gentle and sweet as a dove at other times. And you are also playful. Sometimes gluttonous. <laughs> no? What is all this begging for food scraps then? <laughs> Well, all right. You're not gluttonous. You're just a lover of fine foods. How's that? <laughs> he barks happily and wrecks his tail. Yep, she totally got you there, though, Fenris. These markings of yours, they have a certain appeal. They remind me of how we used to paint our faces in our lake. Ah, but these are not just paint. <laughs> do they mean anything to you, these symbols? Some do. Uh, some symbols are sacred to the crows. I am not permitted to tell you what they mean. Others are there to accentuate the lines of the body, its curves and musculature. <laughs> it is hard to explain with armor and clothing. Oh, Zevran! But I don't recall seeing many markings on your body. Ah, no. Of course not. They are not in the places you have yet seen. I can show you if you wish. Uh... No, I think not. Is this a problem? Not at all. I merely contend looking at the markings on your face, that is all. Have it your way. Should you change your mind? You'll be the first to know, don't you worry. <laughs> you just don't give up, Severin, do you? We have many things in common, Zevran. Other than our purity and beauty. <laughs> we both spent many years in places other than Ferelden. You are an assassin, and I a bard. Then you were called upon to kill. Often. I didn't like it, but I did it anyway. You didn't like it? You didn't <laughs> like the thrill of the hunt? I suppose. I did like that. The hunt. Not the killing. The killing just signals the end of the hunt. Without it, the chase goes on. You, you killed your marks cleanly, I hope. Whenever possible. Good. When the prey is caught, it deserves a good death. A clean death. <laughs> Perhaps you are right. We have much in common. <laughs> Some professional rogue to rogue talk here. <laughs> so I imagine it has been some time for you, Liliana. <laughs> some time for me? I do not know what you mean. Some time since you last knocked boots, shall we say? <laughs> uh, you did just come from the cloistered life, no? Of course it has been some time. There are more important things in life than knocking boots, Zevran. Oh, I'll not argue that. I simply mean that the body has urges. <laughs> urges given to us by the Maker. Uh... Yours must be considerable after all that time. That is a very personal question. I mean no <laughs> offense. I simply offer my services should you ever feel the need for release. <laughs> Let me think about it then. Should every man in Ferelden <laughs> suddenly die, you may even have your chance. Ouch! Haha! -ha, progress! <laughs> Zeren, Zeren, you really, really, really need to get laid. Really. Uh, <laughs> we need to find you someone as soon as this is over. Zeren, I saw you looking at that girl in town earlier. What did you think of her? My dear Liliana, which girl? I saw many, <laughs> and I watched them all. You know, the one with the... with the shoes. The shoes? 
yes, good <laughs> reference. Well, she also had blonde curls, one in a long braid. A braid? Oh, that one. Yes, I remember her. So what did you think? You seem quite enthralled. Well, she was quite marvelous, except for the butter face. The butter what? Butter face. Everything's marvelous, but her face. <laughs> oh god, that was a bad, bad pun. So what is it exactly that the sisters of the Chantry do for amusement? Do they not have sisters in Antiva, Severin? Naturally. Yet we are hesitant to speak to the sisters back home. They are at Tia Negrano. Uh, how do you say it? Pure, <laughs> not to be spoiled. And you would spoil them just by speaking to them? You really have no idea, do you? I wasn't <laughs> born in the Chantry, Severin. Sisters, we had many ways to pass the time. Work, for instance, and prayer. No time for leisure at all? I was not there for idle pursuits and pleasures, Severin. I was there to contemplate my relationship to the Maker. And that's it? Sounds bloody boring. What did you imagine your Antivan sisters did exactly? <laughs> Well, in Antiva, the Chantries make much of the wine, so I suppose I assumed they drank it. <laughs> I doubt that very much. And there goes one childhood dream. To think I once longed to be a brother. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think I have enough material for one episode now, so let's call it a day here. Um, I mean, I could probably milk out even more uh, dialogue. But it's getting increasingly difficult to trigger the banter, as I said, and editing these kinds of episodes is pretty time-consuming as well. So I think we're fine. And I will now do some off-camera preparations. I will make more poultices. I will do some inventory management. So in the next episode, all that's left to do is have a quick uh, chat in my uh, party camp to our companions. I don't expect them to have... Uh, much more dialogue, so that will be pretty pretty fast. And then we will finally return to Al Iman and start the final part of the game. So, see you again next episode.